Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to work through our group work on change of variables, section 1510. To start off, uh, we have a integral and a transformation handed to us, and so we just need to work through this. Um, R is the region in the first quadrant bounded by uh, two hyperbolas and two lines. And so the transformation um, is given here, and uh, we can at this point, um, start in and start translating. See how far we can get. All right, so this integral through our transformation is going to pull back to a double integral over some region S. And right here, this uh, first square root, that's exactly our V. That'll just become V. And this second square root becomes U. All right, so V plus U is what our function translates to, and we'll have uh, the absolute value of the Jacobian uh, du dv, and so we'll need to find the absolute value of the Jacobian. So for the Jacobian, though, right, we need to know the partial of x with, re with respect to u and with respect to v, and similarly, yu and yv. And in order to find these, all right, we need our x equals and y equals equations, whereas here we have u equals and v equals, since so we've got a little bit of work to do to find those. All right, so um, let's start by getting rid of those square roots. So u squared equals xy, and v squared equals uh, y over x. If we'd like, we can... Uh, Multiply both sides over here, solve for y. And uh, so over here on the left, uh, we have an equation x and y. If we want to get only x and u's and v's, let's take this equation where we have y and sub it in. So we get uh, u squared equals x times x times v squared. And so uh, dividing by v squared, get u squared over v squared is x squared, and taking square root of both sides. Uh, technically, let's consider the possibility this could be plus or minus. However, uh, looking at the statement of our region, our, you know, our x, y's that we're using is the region in the first quadrant. So that means x and y are both going to be positive. And so here, x has to be the positive uh, u over v. All right, in a similar way, uh, we can solve for what y equals. Here, if we take uh, our equation here and solve it for x, what do we get? Uh, we get that u squared over y equals x. And if we plug that in here, then we're going to get uh, u squared over y v squared equals y multiplying both sides by y, we get y squared equals u squared v squared, and square rooting both sides again gives us plus or minus uv. And once again, since we're in the first quadrant, choosing the uh, positive there. So we found our equations, x is u over v, and y is u times v. And so we can go ahead and find our Jacobian. So x with respect to u is uh, 1 over v. With respect to v, uh, we're going to have negative u over v squared. And if we just take the v and slide it out to the numerator with a negative 1 exponent. y with respect to u is going to be v. And with respect to v is u. So working through this, we get uh, 1 over v times u. So u over v um, minus the negative u over v squared times v. So that's going to be plus. For our note's sake, I'll keep the minus the negative. Um, and so our uh, v's will cancel off. And so we get uh, u over v plus u over v. And so that's 2 times u over v. Now, 
Notice what we are subbing in for is the absolute value of the Jacobian. Um, and here we can get rid of it uh, looking at what u and v are. Uh, square roots always spit out um, either zero or positive things, and so uh, u and v are both going to be positive. So this whole product inside of the absolute value is positive, so the absolute value of the Jacobian is exactly uh, what's inside, 2 times u over v. And so with that, uh, we can sub that in for absolute value of j over here. Next, uh, we need to figure out uh, the uh, boundaries of our region in the UV plane that our region here, bounded by these hyperbolas and lines, pull back to. Trying to find space here. I'm going to come up here maybe a little bit. Um, so this first side, I, here, since, since our region is bounded by these four sides, we actually don't need a picture. Um, we could get one if we wanted to. Um, but so x times y equals 1. Uh, we can absolutely uh, take what x and y equal in terms of u and v and plug it in. Right? So x is u over v, and y is u times v equals 1. So the v's will cancel, and we're left with uh, u squared equals 1. So u is plus or minus 1. And again, we're, it's going to be uh, positive for us. Faster way, though, is actually just looking at our transformation equations here. Another way to see what's going on. Um, this is u squared is x times y. Well, we have x times y equals 1, and so we can just right away swap that out with u squared equals 1, and then get our, get our possibility for u. So that works as well. Uh, similarly, over here, the x times y equals 9. Uh, x times y is u squared. So u is plus or minus 9, and we'll take the positive. So we have those two sides with those pull back as. Uh, these other two, uh, we can also, as we did before, uh, take our equation for x and for y and plug those in. Um, here, I think we can be a little bit tricky. Let me get a different color. So v squared is y over x. And so here, we take this equation, uh, divide both sides by x, x y over x equals 1. And this equation, divide both sides by x, y over x equals 4. And so what do we get? Uh, v squared equals 1, v squared equals 4. And so again, since v has to be positive, uh, v is 1 and 2. And so it looks like since we're getting constants for these equations for u and v, uh, we're pulling back to a rectangle. So maybe I'll, I'll draw that at least here. Right, so in the u, v plane, and I just realized you've probably been <laughs> twitching, wondering if I'm going to catch it. Um, u squared equals 9 gives us u equals 3. Good catch. <laughs> All right, so uh, u is 3 and u is 1. So 1, 3 for u, and v it's between 1 and 2. And so we get this rectangle here that we're wanting to move through. This is our S. All right? And so we get nice, clean uh, limits of integration. Uh, we can just move uh, u from 1 to 2, 1 to 3, and b from 1 to 2. And we now just have a nice, clean double integral to work through.
We won't go through all the details, uh, but I'll, I'll go a little bit further. If we uh, pull up the two, that can slide out front. Um, and then if we distribute the u over v to both of these, uh, we'll get uh, just u on the first piece and then uh, u squared over v on the second. Uh, so with respect to u, uh, this will be a pretty clean power rule and a differentiation. Uh, and then afterwards, with respect to v, looks like we'll probably need to uh, use the fact that antiderivative of 1 over v is natural log of absolute value v. In any case, I'll let you work through the details. Uh, what we end up with at the end of the day is 8 plus 52 over 3 natural log of 2. All right, for our second one, we have a double integral over an ellipse. And so this ellipse is, um, I don't know, we don't have to graph it very exactly. There it is. That's not very exact. <laughs> Something like that. We have some ellipse, right? It's not, not a clean uh, circle or anything like that. Um, so polar isn't a right away fantastic option. Um, and neither is rectangular, but uh, with the transformation, uh, we can transform this ellipse and I squish it in and get a circle. There's different ways to do this. Um, the way I thought about it was, well, if we wanted to kind of essentially, instead of this equation, have an equation for a circle, right? Something like u squared plus v squared equals, let's say, 36. Uh, well then essentially we just like this uh, 9x squared to be a u squared and if this 4y squared was v squared then we'd be all set then this would transform to a circle of radius 6 in the uh, uv plane and we could use polar over there all right so here we're kind of discovering our transformation um, u squared is 9x squared then we're wanting to let u be uh, 3x and v be 2y. That would make that happen. All right, so let's work with that. So starting our translation, our double integral over r is going to pull back to a double integral over our region s of x squared, and we don't know what x is yet. I guess we should solve for it. x is u over 3, and y is v over 2. And actually, we're done already. Uh, this is x in terms of u and v, and y in terms of u and v. And so that's nice and quick. So x squared becomes u over 3 squared times uh, the absolute value of our Jacobian, du dv. And so let's work out um, our Jacobian. All right, so our J is our determinant of our partials. And for us, X with respect to U is one third. With respect to V is zero. Y with respect to U is zero. With respect to V is one half. So it looks like we're gonna get uh, one sixth minus zero. And so the absolute value of j is the absolute value of 1 sixth, which is 1 sixth. All right, so we can uh, pull out that 1 sixth as well as the uh, 1 ninth we're getting on the bottom. 1 over 54, uh, double integral of our uh, u squared du dv over our region s. And again, our region S by design, right, is a circle of radius six. And so uh, we can now uh, give polar instructions, uh, polar coordinates to our 
uh, uv plane to work out our integral here. All right, so if we wanted to go ahead with that, let's say that u is our the way we've drawn it, our horizontal, so uh, r cosine theta, b is r sine theta, and we'll have uh, u squared plus v squared equals r squared. And our three uh, fundamental equations there. All right, so uh, working through. Oh yeah, and you know, circle the description, right, is uh, uh, theta is from zero to two pi, and r from zero to six. All right, so that gives us our limits of integration. And so our u squared uh, becomes our r cosine theta squared. And then our uh, du dv becomes r dr d theta. And so once again, uh, we won't go through all the details, but uh, cleaning this up, we're going to get r cubed cosine squared theta uh, dr d theta. And at this point, uh, anti differentiation differentiation with respect to r is nice and clean. Uh, r to the fourth over four, we can evaluate, get a constant, pull it out. More interesting one is anti differentiating the cosine squared afterwards. And uh, so this is reaching way back to calc two. And uh, the key thing to remember there is that cosine squared theta, we can swap out with one half, one plus cosine two theta, right? Taking our squared trig function and swapping out for something in terms of a uh, to the first trig function, just a standard trig function, which we can then integrate from there. I'll let you work through the details. What we'll get at the end of the day is six pi. All right, our third integral, we are asked to use a transformation that's somehow suggested by our function to evaluate the integral. And so here, uh, the thought is our function looks kind of hideous with all these x's and y's floating around and the sum and difference there. Um, what if our numerator was just a clean u and our denominator was just a clean v? Well, let's go with that. If that would sure clean up our function, right? Um, our integral uh, would uh, translate back over some region. We'd have e to the u over v times the absolute value of the Jacobian, the u dv. And we could try and work that out. Well, let's just kind of, uh, let's see what we get for the Jacobian before we start integrating. All right, so, and for our uh, Jacobian, we need the partials of x and y. Um, but we don't have those yet. We don't know what x and y are. We know that u is x plus y, and b is x minus y. And so in order to find our Jacobian, uh, we need to uh, work with our equations here and solve them for what x equals in terms of u and v, and similarly for y. All right, so starting with that, if we uh, perhaps take our first equation and solve it for x, we get u minus y equals x, and let's sub that in here. To get an equation just involving y's, u's, and v's, we get v equals u minus v minus v. And so it looks like we add the 2y over 2y equals u minus v, or y is u minus v over 2. 
playing a similar game if we uh, take our Uh, well, I suppose we could just take our first equation again. Um, if we want to solve this for y, we get u minus x equals y. And if we again plug that into our second equation, we're getting v equals x minus parentheses u minus x. So v equals the minus will turn into a plus for the x, which is nice. So 2x minus u. So it looks like we're going to get uh, u plus v divided by 2 equals x. All right. So from here, we are equipped to compute the Jacobian. Uh, the partial of x with respect to u is 1 half. With respect to v, also 1 half. y with respect to u is 1 half. And with respect to v is negative one half. All right, so working through, uh, we're going to get negative one fourth for the uh, one half times negative one half, then minus one half times one half, so minus one fourth. So this is going to give us uh, minus two fourths. In other words, negative one half. And so the absolute value of the Jacobian is then positive. One half, which we can slide out. All right, so at this point, um, our function is fully translated. Uh, we just need to figure out what is the region we're integrating over. And so here we, we do have some work to do. Um, we have a trapezoidal region uh, with some vertices. And so let's uh, plot those, get our equations, and pull them back. Let's try and keep this on the same screen. Here we go. So this is in the xy plane. Uh, we have 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, negative 2, and 0, negative 1. All right, so connecting the dots here, uh, this is our region R. And we're wanting to see what this uh, pulls back to in the uh, uv plane. All right, so a couple of these sides are nice and clean. Uh, this top side is y equals 0, and over here is x equals 0. We'll take care of those first. Uh, y equaling 0, we can use um, any one of our you know, four equations. We have uh, u and v in terms of x and y, or we have y and x in terms of u and v. And so here, if we uh, substitute what y equals, we're going to get u minus v over 2 equals 0. Multiplying by 2, adding v, we get u equals v. That's the equation that that pulls back to. Similarly, swapping them for x, we have u plus v over 2 equals 0. And so multiplying by 2, uh, subtracting u over v equals negative u. So in terms of the uh, uv plane, if we want to graph it like this, uh, we get two lines here. u equals v as slope 1, and v equals minus u as slope minus 1. All right, two more sides to go. Looks like both of these sides have slope 1. Uh, y equals x minus 1 is the top side, and y equals 
x minus 2 is the bottom. And I'm just looking over to see if there's a cleaner way to do this besides just subbing in for x and y. And I think that there is. Looking at our equations for u and v, it's like if we can mess with our equations and make an x plus y or an x minus y appear, we'll be in good shape. Um, and so here, if we subtract y and add the constants, we'll get 1 equals x minus y. And over here, we'll get 2 equals x minus y. And x minus y is v. Beauty. So real quick, uh, we can see we're getting v equals 1 and v equals 2. All right, so v equals 1, v equals 2. Those are horizontal lines. And so, you know, the region uh, that is bounded by the, the four lines in the xy plane pulls back to the region bounded by these four lines in the uv plane. And that's going to be uh, this portion up here. Just double checking myself. <laughs> Stand by. I think I agree with myself. Um, let's continue. So here, uh, if we want to move through our region up here, uh, think about setting U or setting V. I think uh, setting V and moving U is going to be the uh, cleaner way to think about this. And so, let's see, we're always uh, starting U at our left-hand line here, right? So we're starting U at negative V, and over here we are ending U at V. And those are consistent for each of these uh, v's from 1 to 2. So we get our inside integral, inside limits. So we're always moving u from negative v up to v. And well, what v's are we doing this for? The v's from 1 to 2. All right, and with that, yeah, we still have du dv as uh, we don't need to switch those around because we moved u first. Uh, we've fully set up our integral. We can go ahead and compute, uh, just being uh, careful as we end to differentiate our exponential. I'll let you work through the details. At the end of the day, what we end up with is three fourths e minus. Uh, e to the minus 1 
as our final answer. Good work today, everyone. I'll see you next time.